It's now time for member statements. And I recognize the member from Toronto, St. Paul's. Thank you, Speaker. This Premier is letting developers buy the right to destroy our environment by sidelining conservation authorities. Toronto St. Paul's is not standing for this Conservative government using COVID as a cover while weakening land use planning rules. I've received near 1,000 messages from community demanding removal of Schedule 6 and 8 from Bill 229. We are angry about this government's abuse of ministers' zoning orders against our green spaces without public consultation. Is the resignation of seven Greenbelt Council members, including the chair, not enough? Attacking environmental protections attacks Ontario. Our Greenbelt, wetlands, floodplains, source water, endangered species, the places where we find solace. Your abuse of power places our people, children, seniors in danger of disease and food and water contamination. During COVID, this government is making it easier for people to lose their property through flooding. Families on Peveril Hill, north of Eglinton West, small businesses like SXS Fitness and Wellness and Casual Hair Salon have experienced flooding. Where is their compensation? In St. Paul's, our voices are clear. Remove Schedules 6 and 8 from Bill 229. Consult with our communities, authorities and advocates of real environmental stewardship and climate justice before making yet another disastrous decision. Thank you. Thank you very much. Further member statement, the member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Well, thank you so much, Speaker, and uh, good morning. It is getting close to Christmas, and while this is a time for celebration and connecting with family, it is also the busiest time of year for our local food banks. Our food banks rely on the generosity of our communities to support them with monetary donations and contributions of non-perishable food. This past Saturday, the Baden Optimist Club put on a food drive to collect donations for the Wilmot Family Resource Centre, which provides food assistance to individuals and families living in the township of, townships of Wilmot and Wellesley. It was a pleasure to collect food along with volunteers from the Baden Optimist Club, Baden Chamber of Commerce and Wilmot Optimist Club, and a very special guest, Santa Claus himself. Thank you to all those who left donations at the end of their driveways for us um, and helped to kick off this holiday season by giving back. If you are not able to participate on Saturday but still want to support the Wilmot Family Resource Centre, you can visit their website to make a donation. They are also looking for sponsors for their holiday hamper program, which provides grocery store gift cards and toys to over 180 families in need. Christmas is the season for giving, and I encourage all members to find a way to give back to their community over this holiday season. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you very much. Further member statement, I recognize a member from Niagara Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Parker Curran is 19 years old. He loves nature walks and bright colours. For the past seven months, Parker's been locked away at the Maximum Security Psychiatric Intensive Care Unit at the St. Catharines Hospital. But Parker isn't mentally ill. He's disabled. He has autism. For his entire life, Parker's parents have done everything in their power to ensure he had the best life possible. Now every day he sits alone in a hospital room, his accomplishments evaporating. Parker can't go home as he needs more care than his family can provide. He's been on a wait list for a group home since he turned 18. My office reached out to the minister to get Parker out of this worsening situation and get him into an appropriate care setting. The response was that although Parker's a priority, there's nowhere to put him. All available group home spaces are occupied. Parker isn't the only person stuck in a hospital awaiting placement. From Ottawa to Windsor to Oshawa, adults with autism are unable to receive the care they need and deserve. My constituents have taken up a petition outlining how the current system of crisis intervention for people with developmental disabilities is inaccessible, unsafe and undignified. It's difficult to understand how the Ontario government didn't see this coming and didn't create more group home spaces. The ball was dropped long before all eyes turned to COVID. The lack of action by the Ontario government is negligent and perpetuates the suffering both of autistic adults and their families. It's past time to do the right thing. It's imperative that this government create more group home spaces and move Parker Curran and all other autistic adults out of the hospital and into an appropriate group home setting. Parker and his family deserve nothing less. Thank you very much. Further member statement, the member from Markham, Thornhill. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last week, I attended the 33rd Annual Virtual Scholarship Award Call of the Markham African Caribbean Canadian Association. It's known as MACA. 
MACA is a wonderful community organization based in my riding that has been serving the Afro-Caribbean community in Markham and York region for over 30 years. The annual scholarship award Kala since its inception has provided over 300 scholarships to the brightest student of the Afro-Caribbean descent in York region, valued at over $300,000. MACA has provided critical community and culturally sensitive services and programs to hundreds of underserved youth every year. They encourage and support learning and educational success by promoting inclusivity to working hard to strengthen and empower the community. Mr. Speaker, that is why our government is funding $60 million for the Black Action Youth Plan by supporting over 10,000 black youth and families through this program. We will be able to begin addressing the systemic racism and the disparities that they face every day. I want to thank the President Lisa Joe Facey for your leadership commitment as well as the past president, Pat Cowell, and the NTA Board of Directors for their dedication to this wonderful organization. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Further member statement, the member from Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to rise today and talk about a shocking resignation this weekend from the Greenbelt Council. David Cromley, along with seven more members of the Greenbelt Council, resigned this weekend in protest over the measures in this government's budget that plan to gut the conservation authorities. For weeks, my colleagues and myself have been highlighting the shameful decision of this government to sneak in damaging anti-environmental legislation underneath the smokescreen of a budget. These recent resignations further proof that this government's priorities when it comes to the environment are all wrong. They want to tear up 80 years of environmental protection and help their developer friends pave over the green belt. Mr. Speaker, in Niagara, we saw the absolute worst example of a conservation authority under the previous board, and a board, quite frankly, that seemed very determined to act in the arm of a development corporations and not a steward of the environment. And when these actions were exposed by engaged citizens, they tried to sue them, including a veteran. The changes made to the conservation authority allowed the Niagara Authority to get back on the right path. This decision has the potential to undo all that good work. Mr. Speaker, our kids. Our grandkids' future is at stake. I hope these resignations are needed to encouragement for this government to finally understand how dangerous their plans are. There will be serious consequences. Stop this attack now. We must stand up for our green belt, our environment, our climate, our kids, and our grandkids. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Further member statement. I recognize a member from Simcoe Gray. Uh, speaker, volunteers are amazing people whose work and commitment make a real difference in the lives of their neighbours and organizations within our communities. I'm proud to have been part of this year's South Simcoe Hall of Fame Awards. Mrs. Jo Raines, volunteering in Alliston, is an inspiration to all, whether through her church, the Good Shepherd Food Bank, the Cancer Society, Meals on Wheels, or quietly on her own. Mary Jane Archer is committed to the Curling Club in Beaton and an energetic supporter of FAB the fund for a new community centre in the town. Joyce Maltby has fostered 36 children over 50 years. She still finds time to volunteer with Matthews, Matthews House Hospice and the Beaton Fall Fair. In Angus, Elizabeth Smolders is active with the Lions Club, the Santa Claus Parade and Canada Day celebrations. She sponsors athletic teams and has donated trophies to non-profits like the Special Olympics. And in Essa, when uh, Wilhelmina Vanderpost isn't beautifying the town with her gardening, she's helping out with the Heart and Stroke Foundation and the Cancer Society. Speaker, these award recipients don't give their time and talent because they want something in return. They serve because they want to help others, because they want to make a real difference. And so I join all members in this assembly in saying thank you to all the volunteers who go above and beyond to make South Simcoe a better place. Thank you very much. Further member statement, the member from Don Valley North. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. As the holiday season is just around the corner, I would like to take this opportunity to remind my constituents in Don Valley North and all Ontarians to remain vigilant about your health and safety during the winter holidays. Speaker. No matter where you live and celebrate in the province, the top priority 
is to be sure that we protect ourselves and our loved ones. Planning for the receipt and roll up of the vaccine is already underway. Our government created the Ministry of COVID-19 Vaccine Distribution Task Force to prepare for the delivery of the vaccine. Speaker, we are almost at the finish line. This is a critical stage in our fight against the COVID-19. Thus, we require us to work together as a province and as a country to face the challenges ahead of us, to protect the health and well-being of each and every Ontarian. Therefore, I strongly urge all Ontarians to continue to follow the public health advice. Together, we can each do our part to limit the spread of the virus during this holiday season. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Further member statement, the member from Kiewetanu. Uh, good morning, Speaker. Uh, this morning, again, our month here in the legislature started with the singing of the, of the uh, Royal and the Canadian anthems. And again, I did not stand for the anthems. I do this to honor my ancestors who signed our treaties. I will continue this until, go uh, until governments honor the treaties that they have signed. I will continue this until Indigenous people are treated equitably and our children have access to education, clean water, and safe housing. I should not have to stand here, Mr. Speaker, and feel like I'm complaining just because to get uh, basic human rights for our people. In the treaty process, our ancestors sacrificed a great deal, and still, I have to beg your government to uphold your end of the treaty. Our children have to go on TV and ask for clean drinking water and safe schools. Speaker, this is unacceptable. Children like B. Dabin and Lyndon from the Skandaga shouldn't have to grow up wondering when they will get clean drinking water. The Crown, through Ontario, has a role in getting them clean water. Without honesty, fairness, and respect from Ontario and Canada, what we have is not a relationship. It is abuse, Mr. Speaker. We have kept our part of the treaty. It's time for Ontario to start doing the real work of getting, keeping, keeping up their side of the treaties. Miigwech. Thank you. Further member statement, I recognize the member from Aurora, Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Thanks very much, Speaker. Happy to rise today and share with everyone how my local communities of both Aurora and Richmond Hill have been preparing for the holiday season. We know the pandemic has made things more challenging for everyone, but as we know, Ontarians are strong. We persevered and we found new ways to carry on with our lives. Speaker, I was thrilled to participate in both my community's annual Santa Claus parades. There, I had the chance to see what folks in my riding had done to make their celebrations fun, merry, and safe. Even in the midst of a pandemic, Speaker, organizers work hard to ensure that this year's festivities were celebrated safely and with the well-being of everyone in mind. I want to personally thank the many community groups and businesses that helped make everything possible. Thanks to all of you. The families of Aurora and Richmond Hill were able to enjoy this amazing experience once again this year. So as you get out there and celebrate, please be mindful of public health guidelines, practice physical distancing, and most importantly, enjoy your holidays. Speaker, we all know that everything is different this year, but the warm holiday spirit that fills our hearts is still the same. To the residents of Aurora, Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill, and every Ontarian, I wish you and your loved ones a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a happy and healthy 2021. Thank you very much. Further member statement, the member from Mississauga, Streetsville. Thank you and good morning, Speaker. As we know, this year has been very difficult for everyone. Whether it's your business, your job, or your personal life, COVID-19 has affected us all. As we come to the holiday season, I wanted to express my sincere gratitude to the people of Ontario, our frontline heroes, and those who have made the utmost effort to combat this pandemic. I especially would like to thank our Premier and Health Minister for each day working with the health table to find the right balance by putting the health and safety of our constituents as the utmost priority. Our businesses have suffered over the months. Many are living alone and have not been able to see loved ones. And those in our long-term care and senior homes are wanting to stay safe and keep COVID out. 
We are by no means over with COVID, but we have certainly learned a lot. Soon we will have access to a vaccination, which in turn will allow us to finally bring some normalcy to our lives. It will take time to begin traveling, fully open all businesses, or visit our loved ones. But at this time of year, where we just came through the Wali, which represents light over darkness, or as we begin to celebrate the holiday season with Christmas, Hanukkah, and of course the new year on the way, we can all reflect and bring hope and comfort to our loved ones. Let's all look forward to the hope that 2021 can bring. Happy Diwali, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whichever way you celebrate, and Speaker, most of all, wishing all members of this House, the clerks, peace officers, security staff, and safe and happy New Year. Thank you. Well, the time for our member statements has expired. I beg